man, MC Fizzy from the Genius Crew, and you don't know the classic. I said it's time for action. Boom, 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 selection. Whoosh! Hi, I'm Lisa. Hello, I'm Liam Brown from Sweet Film Attitude. Yo, people, it's your boy MAC So So, the fuck of the family you could have been. And what made you get into UK garage music? Can you remember the name of the first DJ that played it? You've been chosen to perform as one of the UK Garage All-Stars. How does that make you feel? I think it's amazing. But they had to, innit? It's my tunes. Bad tunes, yeah. Very, very privileged. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now I'm feeling like Neil in the Matrix. Yeah, I'm happy, man. Very, very, you know, momentous occasion. Hi everybody, my name is Maxwell D. Okay, I don't want you to be no. serious in this interview. No. <laughs> um, Maxwell, you've been chosen to <laughs> represent as an official member of the UK Garage All Stars. What does that mean to you? It means a lot, actually. It means that, you know, when I started as a young little kid, um, I say young little kid, I say early early 20s I'd say that what I was doing then as a hobby as, as such as fun with my friends to be here years down the line and to be representing UKG that of loads of artists and that I've gone into the national charts and stuff like that to be representing the UK on my back like that it, it's a privilege yeah it's a big you said as a little kid how long have you been, actually been in the music industry 23 years Wow. yeah yeah I know yeah, 23 years is quite a long time still um, but it doesn't feel like 23 years. <laughs> it feels more like, I don't know, just a, a, a compile of memories of different things, different, you know, scenes, genres. Yeah, yeah. But you do look back and you think, oh my God, yeah. Proud? I'm proud of some, most parts, yeah. Like 80% of the parts I'm proud of. The parts I'm not proud of are just lessons, young. You know, not understanding the industry, not understanding myself as, as a young kid. More importantly. You know? Yeah, basically, most yeah. Most importantly. Is, yeah. is most importantly, not understanding myself. Max, what made you get into UK Garage? Um, UK Garage for me was when I was out clubbing at a young age. But because for me, UK Garage, when it reminded me of the, drum, jun the jungle scene a little bit when I used to, you know, MC on Cool FM and MC on the radio with them guys. So when I went clubbing um, and I saw the likes of Viper and DT and that on a stage in the Club Coliseums, it just all brought it back to me. It was like, this is that, that UK vibe again, this is that thing. But the energy and the people and what, you know, the DTs would be in there and, you know, it's the catchy hooks and, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what really drew me to, like, the energy, the, 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 the people. Everything was just the fashion, everything all in one, you know, had to be in there. Like, the queues were, like, quite long round the corner. It just brought that whole drum and bass jungle experience again, but it was a new thing. It was, it was just a whole new thing. Now yeah. you're doing it in shoes and you're doing it in a shirt yeah, and some yeah, fancy it, clothes. It was completely, you know, <laughs> there was no one didn't want to wear no pants and stuff. <laughs> Everyone wanted to wear blazers and yeah, it was a whole different ball game. Do you have a favourite MC, DJ yeah, from yeah, that time? Yeah, um, I'd say that my favourite MC at the time was um, Viper, but CKP was my, my, my go-to guy because the vibes from CK was just like him and Ezer, that combination was Energy. horrible, yeah. And Viper for the hooks, you know, I, I learned, I took a lot of notes from Viper, just like coming in a raise and singing them big, swinging them big hooks. And you know, yeah, so those two were like, if you if you actually studied me, you would realise that a lot of my styles are, it's not styles, but more the um, technique would be like Viper and CKP in, in, a, in an MC format. Inspired by. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the release of your big UK Garage track. Can you wow. remember when it was released? Can you remember the year and the month? And introduce it. So I want you to introduce your single like you're on the radio. Wow, okay, how do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I say, yo, I've um, got a brand new single, um, it's called Serious, Don't Let Me Get Serious. No, actually, it's called Serious. I say Don't Let Me Get Serious, but, um, okay, I've got a brand new single, 
Um, it's called Serious. It's produced by myself. Um, and yeah, it's out now. <laughs> that's what we would say, it's out now in the shops. Like, go and get it, go buy the vinyl. <laughs> yeah, the that's part. what you would have said yeah, then, now you go yeah. press download. Yeah. Uh, so produced by yourself, Serious is the track that starts like you're in a boxing match, sham yeah, clashing. That was, you know what, that was, to be fair, that was, who done that? I think it was um, Gary Tomlin that, that played the Rocky sample bit. Da, 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 da. Mm. And then me and Carl D is in there and he, like, he helped with a, a few bits of the buttons of the production, but mainly it was just me, yeah. And, um, but do you know what, let me give you a joke. Do you know who the first person to play Sirius was? Yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 yourselves, man. Um, I remember the, the, the Dream Team, they played it on Radio 1, one of their shows. And that's, that's when, yeah, because before that, um, we was cutting the plates and, you know, we pull it out. Did, did they pull it out first? Oh, it's such a long time ago. I'm trying to think. Did you go on for liberty? First. No, it was it was relentless first. Relentless. The, the bug relentless. Not 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 Shabs is relentless. <laughs> it's the, the moody relentless. Yeah. Um, I didn't know at the time. It was just some guys that I was working with, and um, yeah, I remember we we done stuff stuff for a little while, and yeah, that was it. And then I will never forget. I got told, yo, you, you got played on you got played on the radio. Is it your dream team? Da, 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 da. And I was like, wow. And then we, I think, yeah, that's it. And then we started cutting dubs afterwards for everybody. But that was the initial pu push to say, yo, this tune's got something. Because I think you played um, Chucky Mondo's, um, yeah. one of Chucky Mondo's yeah, yeah, tunes yeah, as well. Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. played Chucky hard. Yeah, so it was that Chucky Mondo. And then that comes just slightly at that time as well. So, yeah, it was a big, that was the first introduction into the scene. I, must, a, I must have been, I was out somewhere. I can't remember where, and this guy kind of came up to me and was like, yo, yeah, you know, I know you're a DJ and I made this tune. I said, oh, right, what's your name? And he's like, yeah, Juki Munda. And the name just like stuck okay, in my yeah, head, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, cool. And I said, he said, but will you play it? I said, I promise you, if I play the tune and I like the tune, I'll play it. I'm going to play it, yeah. right? When I get home, I can't just play it now because I've not heard it. Yeah. He's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Went home and played it. And every week, uh, to me, Mikey and myself, we'd sit down and have like a mini, mm -hmm. like a playlist meeting to go, what tunes have you picked up this week? Yeah. There'd be some that we've all picked up that yeah. we're definitely going to play and then everyone would recommend a couple of tunes. Yeah, yeah. So I'd play Jukie's tune. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, who's, who's, who's this? this? Where's this come from? I said, boy, the guy just, the guy just came up to me, his, his, number, his number's on the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we're definitely playing this and we must have rinsed it. So then I saw him, I like, well, I can't believe you played it. I'm like, Bob, I told you if the tune's good. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we, we go off. But the same thing happened with Sirius. Sirius yeah. And I heard it, so as DJ, I always like to have a track to start my set that had mm. an intro, mm. not just start with beats. I wasn't someone who liked to just mix into yeah, yeah. the other DJ's tune and then heard Sirius and I was like, yeah, this is hard. Yeah, no, you, yeah, man, I mean, after that show, that was, you know what I mean? Like the boys and that behind, everybody behind it was like, yo, we got something here, like you need to push, you need to go and cut dubs, you need to do this, and that's, that was my whole introduction. But prior to that, to be fair, Ramsey and Fenn did really give me the, the true experience. I, I think it was, while Sirius was in, on an underground level, as in like just in the you know, studio or whatever, before we, you, uh, Ramsey and Fenn, I, CKP broke his leg, and Sarah from, right. called me and she was like, yo, um, can you fill in, do this eight bar, on this track for Ramsey and Fenn. And I'm just like, Ramsey and Fenn, okay, he's a big guy in the scene. And then, yeah, I went and done that eight bar, favorite part of me. And that was like my first introduction. And it was like, had a little sign in with it. So photo shoots, so I was just, just young. That was before Cirrus. No yeah. one doesn't really yeah. know that. Yeah. You know I mean? And then Cirrus and from you, from there on, yeah, that was it. We got Max and, and here, we are. here we're, we are. We're still here, we're, we're still here. Um, did the track get signed to a major? No, what happened was, everyone, with Sirius, it was relentless, the book relentless, and I'll say the book relentless because there was two relentlesses, there's, and what, you know, they didn't yeah. really make it. Um, they was independent, and then they signed it over to Tony for Liberty, who was independent. But there was loads of deals at the table, but we just, I don't know, they just decided to do it themselves at the time. I think Parlophone and loads of other people were trying to get the tune. Um, but yeah, it didn't, we just done it independently. But um, I got a publishing door off the back of it with EMI. That was where- It's the main thing. Yeah, that was my major little link, yeah. For a young little 21 year old, I suppose. Oh. Can you remember how many copies it sold? Yeah, on vinyl at the time, I remember the first, oh man, 
Wait, no, we done. No, we done fifteen thousand. So serious is a double. Is about thirty thousand. Yeah, final. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. On final. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That just got shipped because it went from the we, we shipped a load on the, the see through vinyl. Yeah. And then it went Clear over vinyl, to yeah. the, the, the other vinyl. Yeah. Was it and blue? Have I got a blue vinyl one? Or no, that's that's the page you go one. That's, okay. That's the that's the page you go one. That was um anyway we go page you go. My one was the see through one. Yes. And then then the, the Jameson mix and yeah. the other one on the side. Yeah. So I think yeah, thirty thousand them times. But that tune, I can't even give you what revenue that tune has because it's just it just prints money. So it sounds mad to say that, but it does. No, in a nice way, in a nice way, yeah. In, in, in flowers way, right? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It, it just it just continues to just print money like it's, it would never anywhere from it for advert, from a remix, for a dub play. I still do dub plates twenty three years later. You know what I'm saying? Like it's still and they still work. I still play the tune. Yeah, the people just go mad. I thought it's just one of those things. Like you know, I would. Why can't I make twenty series like yeah? Because it because it doesn't because <laughs> it doesn't go like that. I mean, what you've got no, to it's time, it's the location, it's used, it's the era, it's it's so many dots that link up to what, what that is. What stars you, have to be lined. It, it's it's very hard to imagine this when you're talking about yourself, but for all the people in the world that have ever made music, mm-hmm. you're most probably going to be in a one or two percent group out of that that can still be playing and earning money off a track they made 20 odd years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's You're true. blessed to have one of those. Yeah. 98% of people don't have, don't have one. That's true. I didn't think of it like that. Yeah, when you say it like that, I kind of feel special still. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, but you must, you know, you yeah. know you could go you and do a, a few of those as well, so it's But you, cool. could go and be on, you could go on, on the weekend and do a PA and do No We or Ooh. a version of No We and you go no. and do Serious. Yeah. And then them records came out over 20 years ago. It's true. They're like rear grooves. No, it is. It's, it's, it's coming like oh, that's it, right? yeah, yeah. They're rear grooves, boy. <laughs> nah, I'm grateful. I'm very, very grateful, though. Very, very grateful. Because I think, for me, it was like, as I said, when you're young and you're just getting on with it, you're, it's just this fun, this energy. You're with your friends. You're running around. You have no idea of what you're putting down as an imprint. Like, you have no idea. And the thing to look back now and think, oh, God, OK, 23 years later and we're still... It's like, I might, I, would I have done it different 23 years ago? Would I, would I have really took it more seriously? Would I... You know, it just... It, ha- it had to happen the way it did, so... And part of the magic is because it happened the way that it did. Exactly. If you're more calculated about no, it, you wouldn't have had the flow, you wouldn't have had no, the vibe. No. You wouldn't they were have radio bars. It. They weren't even. They were bars yeah. put together. They were yeah. like the hook was from somewhere. So, you know, radio hook there. A couple of bars that are, they were. It wasn't. It's like a, a vibe. Story. It wasn't like a whole song. It was just a vibe. Like take, let's go. One of the biggest UK garage records of all time. I think it's fair to say that is Craig David's oh, Rewind, of right? Course, of and that's course, not course. a song. It's a vibe. You it's listen vibe, to it. Yeah, yeah. It's an. It's another vibe. Yeah. You spoke about your love of CKP, mm. not because. He had all of the bars, no, but it because the, it's a vibe, vibe, it's an energy. Any room, any place, anyone there, his voice will just cut through the microphone and that's it. You're dancing, you feel good, you know what I mean? And when the beat drops with the bass and his voice goes over it, it's a shutdown. That's it. It's just that's that was the energy that he gave. He was one of our, he was one of our twice as nice residents, so yeah, he's elite. I've worked he's elite. worked he's with him. Outside of Sirius and outside of No We. What's your favourite UK garage record? Oh, that's a that's a good one. It's gonna be maybe one from Soul Solid, and which one? Um, well, it's actually I they don't know Miss Dynamite yeah. remix. It's gonna yeah. be why did my watch? She killed it, didn't she? When I said I'm on the microphone, don't, 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 don't get me started. When I heard it, I sat back and I was like, why am I on this record? <laughs> why am I not on this girl? And it's funny because me and they are such good friends, yeah? So it's just like, we, I was bringing a radio at the time. Because when, when did we, yeah, because we, before we went to Miami, no, we become really good friends in Miami. We've done the music conference That's right. in Miami. WMC, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we we done that and then we come friends in Miami. And then after that, I was like, right, I'm going to bring you radio. I, I, you're, you're like me. You're like a female version. Like, I love it. The yard thing. I was like, all right, cool. And then we went radio a couple of times and she had Sticky Boo, whatever. And then I think months later, I remember someone playing it to me. And I was like, and then I heard these verses and I was like, oh. He bodied it. Oh, <laughs> horrible. So every time I hear that tune, the energy, I just, I, I just want to break out. And then another one, funny enough, one of my favourite Gary tunes that no one most probably wouldn't realise is The Streets. 
Why does it come to this? Oh, filth. Oh. You're listening to another... It's filth. Bruv, that tune is timeline. It's ahead of, it. it's ahead it, of its time. It's a timeline song. Like, it gives me goosebumps when yeah. talking about it. That song, to me, you could be like, it brings me back. It brings me... It, it's, it does something to me spiritually. Like, it like reminds me of my youth. It, 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 yeah, that, that, that song. Then. But, Garage, you can say, the list will go on. Tick, 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 because there was too many songs. You know you can play a good two hours of garage music and they were all hits and they all went in the charts. Okay. You know the strangest thing you said about that? I've done a playlist of 50 tracks for New Year's, for, for like a New Year's Eve party for Spotify. Wow. And I had to pick five records out of 50 yeah. and do a line on, just like a couple of lines on, yeah. on it. And one of the five was, was the streets. streets. Biggest tune. Because the thing, like the beautiful thing about garage as a genre is that how many different styles there mm. are within the genre of garage. Mm-hmm. So if you listen to drill yeah. or you listen to grime, there's not like a grime love song or a grime no. ballad or a grime spoken word no. or a, a grime, you know, you might have an instrumental or you've got an MC on it, yeah. right? But when you look at garage as a genre, records awful. that can be classified as garage, yeah. you'll have the streets as mm-hmm. it come to this, You've got That's 21 like seconds. Kind of thing. And you might even go, right, 21 seconds and serious are similar. All right, yeah. cool. But then Love Bug yeah. is different again. Completely then different. you've got Woman Trouble, Craig yeah, David yeah, and Robbie yeah, Craig. Yeah, yeah. That's funk. That's different yeah. again. Then you've got Daniel Bedingfield. Yeah, no, That's no, different yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And these are all garage. different garage records in within the genre. That's why I think it's, you know, it makes it's it a special. beautiful thing. I think Garage gave us that take on, like, you know, anyone from different walks of life, no matter what you was feeling, could p- put their own elements into Garage. Yes. You know, we, my parents were Jamaican, so there was that dance all vibe. You know, you know, when I heard um, MC Uno, um, Master of the Ceremony, yep. like, you know, they, that American kind of, that vi- rap vibe, yep. you know, and everyone just gave their own little stuff to it. So I think that's why Garage stood out more than anything, because, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Right, okay. I'm going to give you a quick little UK garage I'm ready, test. I'm ready, let's go. You ready, yeah? I'm ready for this. How many number ones has UK garage as a genre produced? I'm going to guess, I'll say about. Twelve. Not that many. I was close though. Eight, I'm going to go for. Bonafide. Get, name me a couple of them. Okay, so Oxide Neutrino. Yeah. Uh, casualty. Um, no, Bound. Yeah, okay, yeah, casualty, yeah. Yeah, um, so solid, 21 seconds. Yeah. Um, ah, oh yeah, see, there are a lot of top threes, a lot of top fives. Yeah, number ones, Daniel Benefield. Yeah, we Three. Get three. Um, garage, 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 come and think, 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 think. Oh, I'm stuck at four. Why am I, why am I stuck here? Um, who, 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 who? Ooh. Craig oh, David. F- Craig David, that's, that, um, Flowers. No. She didn't. Interestingly, kept off the top spot by Craig David. Oh, battling. That was one and two. Oh, they were one and two. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Mystique. No. Huh? Not number one. No top way. Top tens. No oh, number one. Oh, wow. Um, I can't think then. I've, met, I've, I've gone to the big big ones. So I've gone to the big swingers. No, so you've got... Who have I missed? You've still got Baby Cakes, which is 2004. Oh, yeah. When it, yeah. And oh, what about... Um, Chocolate boy. Chocolate boy. Yeah, that yeah. was the first. That was the first. Yeah, yeah. I was so, going to ask you that. So but you know what it is? The reason why I missed that out because they, I didn't class them as garage. I just classed them as pop songs. Yeah. Imagine that. But they were popular they were, garage songs. They were popular garage songs. They were. Um, the hit single "It's a London Thing" was produced by who? Scott Garcia. What's the name of the famous nightclub in Vauxhall that hosts? What was the first house and garage number one? Um, baby cakes. No. no, 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 no. Chocolate boy. Yeah, yeah. Chocolate yeah boy. So I knew it was chocolate boy. Yeah, yeah. Final question: What's the first date and city that you can see and hear the UK Garage All Stars? Scotland. Which city? Uh, Edinburgh. The other one, Glasgow. Oh, Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> had a fifty-fifty chance. I know. Do you remember the date? Um. It's the 21st, right? Yes, yeah. of June. Of June, yeah, 21st of June. I got it right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Max. Thank you very much, Minion. Thank you very, yeah, it's very much. It's lovely, like, thinking back and remembering those days, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Now, trust me, um, congratulations, man. It's, it's been a long journey and a quick one at the same time. It's yeah. very, you know, it's timeless. Like everything, well, to even be sitting here and we're talking about our history is, is a big thing. So I appreciate it. God bless you. Good. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Don't let me get serious. I let my drop in my night, cause I'm too dead, cap. Don't let me get serious.